All right, so this is the next section on solving differential equations numerically. Today we're going to talk about RK methods or wrong Akata methods. Okay, so so far we talked about three different ways to solve differential equations numerically, forward, backward, Euler, and trapezoidal rule. So this is going to be the fourth way to calculate uh, the numeric uh, or do the numerical solution of the differential equations. Okay, so we start from our generic form of a differential equations, uh, which is dy dt, and that is equal to f as a function of y and t in general. And we have some initial conditions, y is zero, or y t zero is equal to y zero. And uh, in a general way, we can integrate both sides. If we integrate the left side, it's going to be uh, the integral of dy dt is going to be y. And if you just integrate between two values, tn and tn plus 1, then the left side would be yn plus 1 minus yn. Okay, so integration of this between tn and tn plus 1 is going to be yn plus 1 minus yn. And the integration of the right side would be integral of fy dt, okay? In other words, you can think of multiplying both sides of this by dt and then integrate. So you basically get this equation. And then now uh, second order wrong Akata methods come in. So if you just uh, summarize it, we're going to use uh, this this integral to, to calculate uh, this integral actually numerically now instead of analytically because we don't uh, we don't want to integrate f. I mean, there are cases that integrating f d, integrating f at function y dt is impossible because we don't know what y is. We know what f is, but we don't know what y is. Okay, so the way to do this is <clears throat> we pretend to calculate this using trapezoidal method. And trapezoidal method if you want to integrate between two values, we, um, we interpret this as a trapezoid, and the area of the trapezoid would be one half of the height, which is h, which is dt in this case, and then times uh, the sum of the two bases. So the sum would be the function at tn plus the function at tn plus one, and that's what we have here. Okay, so that's the function at yn, and then function at yn plus one. The an average of the two, you multiply h, that's going to be the area of the trapezoid, which is pretty much close to the integral of this function from tn to tn plus 1. All right. So now the question is, what is yn plus 1? Because we don't know, right? So if you're sitting at point n, we know what yn is, but we don't know what yn plus 1 is. So that's the, tr that's the problem. So we're going to use, uh, we're going to use the value at yn to do basically something like forward difference to calculate yn plus 1. And then we substitute this yn plus 1 into the second piece of uh, the right side here. So, okay, that's going to be f of yn plus 1. But this yn plus 1 is nothing but the forward difference uh, that that is calculated based on yn. And then we get the average of the, the two f values. And then uh, well, by doing so, we can calculate the yn plus 1, right? Because, as we said, the integration of the left side here is y n minus y n plus one minus y n, and the integration of the right side is is um, this term, right? It's the is the area of the trapezoid, and by equating them, we can find the y n plus one. So at the end of the day, y n plus one is y n plus. So now everything is in terms of y n. We don't have y n plus one anymore, right? So this is y n. Here's y n t n. And here, yn plus 1 is nothing but, again, in relation with yn. So everything is related to yn. Okay, so if you want to summarize this, the way to calculate, uh, uh, if, or the, the way to integrate uh, differential equations numerically, is first we calculate k1. Then we calculate, k, well, k1 is going to be the h or delta t times f at yn and tn. Then, uh, then we calculate k2 based on k1, and k2 is going to be the h times f of yn plus k1, which we calculated before, and times tn plus 1, okay? 
So that's going to be y, this is going to be k2. And then yn plus 1 is going to be yn plus average of the k1, k2. So this is going to be k1, this is going to be k2, we get the average of the two, that's going to be added to yn to get yn plus 1. Okay, so let's look at one example here. Okay, for this example, we're going to look at um, example 5.4 of the textbook. Um, in this example, we have a reaction equation. So in this reaction, uh, the rate of change of concentration of, let's say, species A is proportional to uh, the concentration of the species itself. So with, with few prefactors f and f and v, the differential equation looks like this. And because uh, the rate is negative, then we know that the population or this concentration goes down in time. And the exact solution is this. So we're going to solve this analytically and, and maybe convert it with the exact solution. Okay. So. Uh, Okay, so then compare it with the generic form of the differential equation we looked at so far. dy dt equals something, right? So this uh, c sub a uh, will be replaced by y. So we're going to have dy dt equals, we have to divide by v, so it's going to have minus f over v times c. This right-hand side plays the role of f in the generic form. Okay? All right, so, and then the boundary conditions here, uh, let's see, I think at point zero, I said point zero, I think the concentration is one. So initially, at times zero of concentration one, we're gonna see how the concentration decays in time. Okay, so here is the solution using RK2. First, uh, we, create our, we create our time intervals from zero to one with the increment of point one. Okay, so here's the increment. And then, uh, we also have tau. What is tau? So in the French, in the differential equation, tau is this uh, is f over f over v. So we renamed it actually as now tau. Okay. So let's double check. Our tau is going to be 0.5, and just let me look at the exact solution. The exact solution is. Yeah, exponential of minus um, time times or divided by tau. Yes, okay. So tau is actually is the is a time scale, and according to this equation, is going to be v over f. Okay, so v over f we call it tau. In this case, the right hand side is going to be dc dt equals and then minus ca over tau because. Um, V over F is going to be tau, okay? So V over, let me just write it here. Tau is going to be V over F. Okay, so V over F is going to be tau. And that's equal to 0.5 for now. We assume to be 0.5, I mean, that's a constant. So we designed the problem to be actually 0.5, okay? All right, so first we have to calculate K1. And according to this, uh, k1 is we have to we have to multiply we have to evaluate the function the right hand side of the uh, right hand side of the differential equation at point tn and then multiply by another delta t. Okay, so that's going to be an exponential of I mean the right hand side. So the right hand side of the equation is uh, example yes the right hand side is minus the concentration divided by tau, and that's what we have here, is minus the concentration, which is B3. Right, so B3, B3, B3 is the concentration of the previous step, divided by tau, which is the purple cell. So it's B3 right here, the solution of the current, uh, current y divided by, divided by tau. Okay, again, that is because the differential, the differential equation is like that. So dc dt is minus c divided by tau. And tau is v over f. Okay? So that's how we did uh, k1. And then k2. k2 is going to be 
uh, okay, so h times f evaluated at y plus k1, and then at time tn plus 1. Okay, so this is going to be h, which is going to be, so the h is constant, it's a blue cell, times, with a negative sign, and then times uh, f, f of yn plus k1. So yn is going to be the green cell, which is b3, plus k1, we calculated that's purple cell, right? So this is y plus k1, right? There's no t here. So that's going to be minus y plus k1, and then times h, all right? And then, uh, oh, by the way, and then divide by tau, because the differential equation, the f is actually, the f is um, minus c divided by tau. So c plays a role of y here. So the c is going to be um, the concentration of the, of, the, of the current step plus, right, so plus k1, the purple cell, and then divide by tau, and the negative sign, and then times the t. So that's going to be k2. Again, we are following this equation, right? So f of y n plus k1, and that's going to be um, c n plus k1, because our f is nothing but just minus c divided by tau. So this is going to be minus uh, c n plus k1 divided by tau times h. Okay. All right, so that's K2. Now we have K1, K2. We can calculate the next RK value. Then the next I can va IK value will be the previous one, which is B3, the blue cell, plus half of K1 plus K2. And that's coming from this equation, right? So previous Y plus one half of K1, K2. That's going to be the previous concentration blue cell plus half of K1 plus K2. So this is it. The rest of it is dragged down. So we're going to drag this guy down, uh, we highlight these two, drag them down, and then what else? Not exact solution, we know the exact solution. So exact solution is given to us, for example, uh, 5.4, and that's the exact solution. And the initial concentration is 1, so it's going to be 1 times the exponential of minus t over tau, and that's what we have here. It takes exponential of uh, y0, which is 1, times an well, y0 times the exponential of minus t, which is a3, the green cell, divided by tau. Okay, so this is the exact solution. You can also drag this guy down. And then we can also do the same thing. We can solve the same problem using forward Euler. I don't go over that. It's very quickly. The initial condition is exactly as before, is 1. And then this one is going to be the previous, the previous uh, concentration, which is the blue cell, plus H, which is now B1. Now in this case, it's going to be DT, that's B1. And then times the right-hand side of the, the differential equation, which is minus F divided by tau. Right? Minus uh, concentration divided by tau. Concentration is going to be the previous concentration. Or in other words, uh, F3 okay? divided by tau. So that's the exact solution. We can also drag this guy down. And then now we can, oops. Actually drag this one down. Okay, now we can go ahead and plot these. So let's say this is the Euler method, the last column versus the time value. We can also plot RK. This is also the exact solution, which is column E against time. And then buried under this is going to be RK2, which is really hard to see. And that's going to be, let me see if I can catch it. Nope. Unfortunately, this is, uh, these are very close. So anyways, the exact solution RK2 are very close. So you can see that you cannot distinguish it at this, uh, at this, th at this resolution. Anyways, so, so we learn how to do this using RK2. In the next video, I'm going to show you uh, perhaps another example how we can solve the differential equation using RK2. All right, so stay tuned and thanks for watching.